Hello! Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is some basics of graphing in Excel. Now Excel is a tool that you'll probably want to get familiar with. Uh, it's, it's invaluable to have some sort of Excel training uh, if you're doing any sort of data work, uh, even though it is probably not the preferred tool uh, for most ana types of analysis, uh, you, also, you do generally want to you know how to use it. It is often used as some sort of um, uh, pre preparatory uh, activity uh, before you uh, uh, you know get to the real stuff. So you might want to do some, might do a little bit of preparation or cleaning in Excel. Also, a lot of the time in a business environment, other people will be using Excel, so you want to be sort of on the same page with them. Uh, so uh, graphing in Excel, there are some benefits, right? It's very easy to control uh, some of the finer details of formatting in a very easy way. The learning curve is very low. All you got to do is just sort of click on something and it will open up the formatting tab and you can usually change, uh, change whatever it is you want. Some downsides. Uh, it can actually be very, very difficult to work with Excel if you're doing something that Excel does not expect you to do. It's not super, super flexible, or at least it's not until you become a power user. So I mentioned that really low uh, learning curve. That's true for if you want to kind of make the kind of graphs that you're expected to make, right, sort of standard graphs. Uh, but if you're not, uh, then things can get really difficult really quickly. I actually find Excel one of the more difficult tools to use uh, for graphing a lot of the time, uh, even though it is more of an entry level product. Uh, also, there's no paper trail. Uh, it, it, it's difficult for people sometimes to replicate whatever you've done uh, because what you have in Excel is the resulting graph, but you don't have like a list of code that leads you to that graph. So there's some upsides, there's some downsides, but whatever it is, you got to know how to use it. Uh, so Let's make a couple of basic graphs in Excel. Uh, so in Excel, the way that you can make a graph is you have some data here. Uh, you select the data that you have, and then you can go to insert, uh, and then you can hit insert a graph from here. Up here at the top, there's different kinds of charts. Uh, so for example, there are bar plots, uh, there are line graphs. Uh, I would recommend avoiding the pie charts. They're generally not what you want. Uh, there's also histograms, which they've added recently, very nice. Uh, we also have stuff like waterfalls. So if you if you if what you're doing fits into one of these sort of standard things, you're good to go. Uh, they also have maps, which are very handy. Excel has a very easy to work with map tool. Uh, if you just put in the names of the locations that you have, it will figure out what kind of map you probably want. It's probably the easiest map tool of any sort of uh, thing that I've I've worked with before. Uh, there's also 3D options, but I would recommend avoiding those as well. So uh, once we have our data, uh, something to think about with Excel, Excel really expects you to have one data point per data point that is going to be drawn on the graph. Uh, that is what it, is it expects you to have. Uh, so any processing of the data you want to do beforehand. And so you want to end up in a point where you have one row for each point of data that you want on your graph. So if I, for example, make a bar graph here, what I have is I have some movie ratings from me and my husband for three different movies. Uh, and because it's going to give us one row or one, one data point drawn on the graph per row, if I do something like a bar graph, uh, it's going to make all of those separate, right? Uh, and uh, what we might want is some way of putting them together. So uh, if you have more data and you want to draw points, uh, then you're going to need to do some processing on your own. There's a couple different ways to do that. I'm not going to go into all the details. Uh, but for example, if you wanted to just pick out uh, my ratings, you might use a VLOOKUP. Uh, what VLOOKUP does is it uh, checks the value of something. And so I could create a VLOOKUP command that would check, okay, does this say me? And if it does, give me the rating. And if not, give me nothing. That would be a good way of, of graphing just a part of your data. Uh, you can also do a control shift enter command. So I do control shift enter. Um, if I, sorry, if I type something in, uh, and I do control shift enter. So let's say I want to do uh, mean and then control shift enter. Uh, it will turn it into a vector operation. So what this could do is this could say, okay, uh, if I want to uh, check if uh, the movie is Jojo Rabbit, and if it is, uh, take the I want to take the mean of all of the Jojo Rabbit observations. Uh, so I could use the control shift enter command to do that. It would take a, a, a list of observations and turn them into one point, which we can then plot. Another thing we can do is we can do a pivot table. Uh, so a pivot table does something similar. So let's say that I want to get the average rating for each of these movies. Uh, I can select my data and do a, a pivot chart. And this will set up the me to, to do a pivot table. So for this, I want to say, okay, I want uh, uh, the average, I want uh, to do each calculation by movie. And I want you to give me the rating of that movie. And specifically, I want the average rating for each movie, and it will create a graph for me right there. So now I have one uh, one column. Now that it's given me one point of data for each point of data that I want to graph, the average rating of each movie, 
uh, it will then plot it properly. Uh, so now we have a graph. Uh, how can we adjust this graph? Well, you can adjust graphs in, in Excel by just clicking on whatever it is that you want to adjust. So if I want to change the, the title here, I can just click on uh, double click on the title and I can fill it in. Average movie ratings. All right. And there we have it. If I want to format it, I over here on the right, whenever I click on anything, uh, there's going to be a format uh, option coming up over here on the right. So I can change the title options. I can change the fill, uh, so fill it in, right? That wouldn't make any sense, but I can do it. I can change the border of the title. I can move the title around if I like, put it over here. Uh, I can change the text. Uh, I can make the text transparent. I can do whatever I want. Right? Really, my, my advice for formatting stuff in Excel is just sort of look around and click around until you find the option that does what you want. Because uh, there's a lot of options and there's no way that you're going to remember them all. So just remember, click on what you want to change, find a way to change it. Uh, and every part of the graph should be changeable. I can click, for example, on these plot areas. I can take out uh, the uh, the border. I can take out these plot lines by clicking on these, these lines, these vertical, these horizontal lines that we have. Uh, I can just take them out. None, please. I want no background there. I can move or change these titles to do whatever I want, right? I can take these uh, axis options and I can figure out, okay, where do I want them to go? I can change where they are. I can change what tick marks they have. So I'll have a continuous variable. Like I said, there's many, many, many options uh, and you don't need to learn them because you can just click on what you want to change and it will show you all the options that you have available to you. Uh, let's do another quick graph. Uh, this time let's do a line graph. So here I have Google Trends results uh, for the word Spider-Man and the word Batman. If I select these and I just go insert line graph, I can see how the popularity of searching terms for Spider-Man and Batman change over time. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out that you can do, I, I might want to change my label. So I got this, this uh, legend down here, but that's kind of annoying. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, and instead, I'm going to put the, uh, the, la the label for each line on the line itself. So I'm going to click on the last point here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a, a, a data label. So I'm going to right click on this point. I'm going to do add data label. And that's going to do a, a 29, which is not what I want. I want it to say uh, Spider-Man or Batman, not 29. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, change my, format my data label. So I can change what label it is. I don't want it to say 29. I want it to say Batman or Spider-Man. So I'll, I will have the label, the series name, which will be whatever was at the top of that, uh, the, of the column. And I can get rid of the value. Take that off. So now it just says Batman. Uh, and I can... Uh, above the point so you can see it a little bit easier. Then I can do the exact same thing with this right here. Take that last point, add a data label, format that data label. The series name. And this one I will put below so you can see it more easily. I can of course change the colors. Uh, the series option, I can go into the the little paint bucket and it'll let me change the color that I have. So this is Batman, so let's make it black. And this one's Spider-Man, so let's make it red. And there we go. Uh, I can also do things like change these axes, like this is a terrible looking axis. So if you wanna change it, yes. Look in there, click around, see how you can change the angle or reduce the number of points or change the formatting of the dates. Um, and that's, that's the basics of graphing in Excel. And this, is, this, this video doesn't have a super a whole lot of information in it, but what I want you to, to know is sort of what's out there that you can check on. Uh, so you, you set up your data. You want to make sure that you have one row of data per thing that you want to be on the graph because Excel doesn't really like to do a lot of processing for you. Uh, it likes to just take the data that you have, put it on the graph by itself. Uh, once you have that, which might take doing a, a pivot table or a, look, a V lookup or a control shift enter command, once you have your data, uh, you can go to insert graph and uh, insert whatever type of chart that you would like. Uh, once we have our graph on there, we can format it by clicking on whatever we want uh, and it will bring up the format options over here. And we just look around until we find what it is that we want because everything's right there in front of us. We don't necessarily need to memorize everything. If I want to change something, by the way, after I have my graph, I can click on the graph, uh, go to uh, format or design or rather design and I can uh, change, do select data here. If I want to change what data I'm using, uh, this is, and I can go in here and edit uh, what's being used. I can also switch things around. So this is off, this is one way that you can, uh, for example, um, if you want to do multiple graphs in the same thing, which can get really difficult in Excel. For example, you want a scatter plot, but you want one, uh, one group to be one color, one group to be a different color. You could go in here and change the legend entries and the series entries that you have, uh, and you can separate them out. So here I have Spider-Man and Batman separately. 
uh, because they're in separate columns. If they were in the same column but stacked on top of each other, I could go in here and manually say, this part of the data is Spider-Man, this part of the data is Batman by adding a series in there. And that's basically it. Uh, so a lot of Excel graphing is trial and error uh, and just try seeing what you can do, making sure that the data shows what you want it to show before you try to graph it. If you want things to be separate in Excel, you wanna make sure they're in different columns as opposed to in the same column on top of each other. So you want wide format, not long format data. And that's it, just play around with it and see what you can do. Thank you.